Well, this was an interesting week. Um, Tesla was really the whole story as far as the markets go this week. And what they uh, did was just cut, take a look at their uh, market, uh, what happened with them this week. I made a few plays here, um, especially on earnings. And uh, I want to thank the Nigerian brothers for giving me the idea. Um, but it was a good one. Uh, coming going into earnings, we were already in this uptrend. Uh, and this gap up is after they reported earnings. And uh, yeah, I was surprised. It went up you know, 12, $12 a share. And then today I didn't play. Um, and uh, it went up, as you can see. Um, well, it was up at one point. It was up at 180 plus, 180.68, and uh, closed the day at 177.88. Now, remember, the low here was around, what was it, 101.81 for Tesla, and uh, they beat on uh, earnings and uh, uh, revenue and they gave actually a pretty good uh, forecast for the future. Now, they've reached this con congestion zone here, but uh, you know that was uh, pretty amazing. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't hang on to it. I was happy with what I uh, made off of the play on Thursday and Friday, I left it alone, but uh, that's the way it goes. Um, Let's take a look. Well, there's more earnings next week, and I'll get to that a little bit later. We'll come back to these uh, charts a little bit later. But let's look at the investor uh, sentiment survey. We can see that as of Wednesday night that uh, there was more bearish sentiment. And, uh, you know, we've gone from 42 down to 33% uh, bearish and then up to 36%. And so... You know, 28.4% um, bullish, and I'd say it's probably something higher than that, although the close uh, this afternoon, which is Friday afternoon, the 27th, was a little weak, uh, which is expected. It was a pretty exhausting day. I wasn't expecting much to happen. Uh, fear and greed index. Uh, and I know some people knock this as far as... You know, you know, there's different levels of of people that are in the markets. There's the what I would call the you know investor, and uh, you know they basically put their money in and leave it there. Then you have um, trend traders. Um, then you also have swing traders. You have day traders. I mean, so there's all sorts of uh, different levels of these things. And although the fear and greed index may be more associated with uh, the trading aspects and less the investor aspects. As I've said uh, pretty much over and over again, we're going to have to be smarter investors by becoming uh, better traders or at least knowledge of uh, trading, especially if you know things don't wind up um, going like they have in the past where you know everybody says uh, the markets always go up then you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get we're just gonna have to get better i believe and that means that you're gonna have to get some trading knowledge and sticking money in to one uh, individual stock is just not going to play so the, and that's my belief and you may disagree and that's fine um but a lot of this channel is 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 uh really focused on trying to move it from not just reporting weekly what these things are, but I'm start to add some things in here where people can, you know, go from an investor and get some trader knowledge. And it's not a bad thing. And I know that there are people <laughs> out there that say that, uh, you know, oh, those traders, they're awful people. Some of them are. I mean, I don't understand some of the sentiment associated with uh, things, but traders could do rather well. Um, you know, once they, they learn uh, their trade uh, and, you know, 
you can make a lot of money doing it and certainly beat the markets uh, that particular way. But you've got to, there's a learning curve and there's a lot of steps in order to become a trader. So anyway, fear and greed index, um, you know, we're in the greed category. Uh, my guess is that, uh, you know, when we get into uh, next week's uh, calendar for economic activity and we start to talk about the Fed, that something's going to knock this back down. Uh, and that's OK with me, uh, too. Uh, so let's look at that economic calendar uh, that we had this past week. And, uh, you know, remember the markets were closed on Monday. Tuesday, we got uh, the mortgage rate, the 30-year mortgage rate inched down. I think it'll probably inch back up uh, next week because the, the 10 year has been kind of inching back up. But uh, that's my expectation there. Uh, we have uh, we, we had the GDP growth come in. The consensus was 2.6%. It came at 2.9. These are uh, strong numbers, but I think they're artificially in there is my opinion, um, from all the spending uh, that we've uh, managed to do. So we'll see that come out in inflation. You just can't continue to um, raise the Fed funds rate and then also spend like our government does. Uh, durable goods orders uh, came in. That was a surprise. And when that number came in, the markets really reacted to that and went down initially on Thursday and they and then recovered you know from it just kind of bounced off it i really thought that was going to uh, drive the markets down lower but it was very resilient it went down when the durable uh, goods number came out i mean these are bad things you know associated with the fed and what they're going to do and uh i think people as i said the sentiment is slowly becoming we don't care about the fed anymore <laughs> You know, we're going to live life and then also our government spending uh, like, like crazy. And so there's got to be money out there for the economy to grow. Uh, we look at, uh, I don't know that there's anything really uh, notable here. You know, PCE usually is something that drives the markets, but. You know, it came in line with what the consensus was, just kind of like last week with the CPI. Um, and so it, there was no real market mover uh, this this past week uh, with regards to uh, PCE. Uh, you know, personal income came in line. So those things didn't really uh, move the markets, um, the eco economic data, um, Michigan consumer sentiment, came in you know pretty good the consumers still hanging in there and uh, then we go to look at next week and we have uh, basically the things I guess that, that I want to point out there, there's there there's two big things happening next week well there's going to be uh, earnings reports and the big ones are going to be on Thursday but um, we get the Fed interest rate decision. I'm sure they're going to come out negative. That's going to drive things down. My expectation is that when on Thursday, when Amazon and uh, Apple report that I'm anticipating good news, I don't know that it will be. And I think that that will turn it around again and we'll start in to, uh, you know, the cycle of uh, this market going up. And I just, it, like I, I've said it, you know, with some of the negative news, you know, that and when I say negative news, I mean negative that the uh, Fed will uh, change or pause or, you know, pivot. I don't think they'll pivot, but at least pause or they're slowing down. All those things are rather positive, but the, every time the market seems to react, they get really uh, sassy about that and knock the markets back down with their words and uh, like I said I, I think it's not the impact of that has become lesser and lesser and um, by virtue of that they're you know I'm not saying they're, they're losing credibility but I think people are like 
you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, you're allowing the government to spend money like crazy and then raising the Fed funds rate. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. All right, so this week we saw, you know, basically you saw five positive days on the Dow, uh, SPY, uh, you know, today, I mean, it was, it was really it had things going. Apple and Amazon both were going nuts. And then at the end of the day, it reversed. I'm going to say in the last uh, maybe hour, uh, 45 minutes of the market. And so then things didn't um, wind up as hot as they were during the course of the day. And it was, a, again, a surprise. I wasn't expecting the markets to go up, just kind of snuck up and moved up. Um, and uh, take a look at the 10-year Treasury. This is the reason why I think you'll see mortgage rates go back up uh, next week. They, they slowly creeped up. Um, and if that trend continues, although that's a, a shooting star uh, right there, this last uh, candle uh, might be an indication that it's turning, but we'll have to wait and see what the next one looks like. Um, but we can see that, you know, it's edged up a little bit and so mortgage rates may edge up also. DXY was, um, you know, it's kind of just been hanging out, uh, where here and I, you know, these lines I've had in before keeps inching down closer to this, uh, 101.263, which if it hits there. Now, some people might say, well, we hit a double bottom, but there's a lot of things that have to happen for that to move the uh, dollar back up. But it could. I mean, it's a possibility. Um, WTI crude was uh, down today, but in stayed pretty level, uh, actually, for the week. Uh, maybe down just a little bit, a um, couple dollars maybe in crude oil. So it stayed down. My expectation still is it'll work its way down. There might be a little more upside in it. Um, the VIX, uh, once it broke this cone, it's continued down. You know, we had this little spike uh, last week, and now we seem to be heading down. Got a little hammer here that may, uh, you know, signal some type of reversal uh, for it to go back up, but. You know, things are shaping up pretty good if you're a bull and uh, you may bull or the uh, bears may have a run next week the uh, put call ratio has really dropped it's down around so 0.7 it basically it, it, some people will say is the point where uh, there's equilibrium between puts and calls and uh, so it, there's pretty good equilibrium right now. It's not like back here where things got out of whack. Uh, I think I had, a lot of people got squeezed in Tesla, um, having uh, puts on Tesla and got it got squeezed. Uh, you know, it was got got a uh, uh, they got squeezed. I mean, that was <laughs> was pretty amazing what Tesla did this week. Um, Apple is again i it's shown weakness and a lot of people have been talking about how it's going to go down to 120 and 115 those types of things um you know it's previous lows 124 it's back up over uh 145 i didn't expect it to get here uh this week and um it it just continues to go up now my expectation is that uh they'll Turn around. We'll see on Thursday when they report their earnings, uh, and you know a lot of people own this stock, and you know it's turned around. Not exactly like Tesla was crazy, uh, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. But uh, again, but um, you know it's a nice move for Apple. My expectation is a good earnings report there, and from Amazon on and next Thursday. And then again, we look at Tesla and its crazy move, you know, in a matter of, what, three weeks. It's moved from a low of 101 to 177. And you'd like to have had all your money in that. 
So that's what I wanted to uh, cover this week. Um, you know, I'm putting together some videos on uh, moving uh, investors, you know, into just, not, you don't think you need to know everything, you, especially if you're not an aspiring trader, but I think you need to become a smarter investor. And so uh, some of the videos that I'll, I'll release uh, associated with, uh, doing that and knowing some of the trading specifics. It's not, you know, everything, you know, some of these things used to be so esoteric, you, you know, you people, oh, well, you'll never learn that. That takes thousands of years to master. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that help you, that can move you along in uh, becoming a better trader. Um, even if you don't trade, understanding the tools and what's happening uh, behind the scenes and how to enter into a stock or an ETF at a good time are just basic skills from my perspective that, that everyone should have. So anyway, that's what I wanted to cover this week. And remember, there is always a better way.